Well, my name is Gaspar Espinoza, and uh, I think for around seven years I was an undocumented alien, as some people called us. Uh, my family migrated from Nicaragua back in the late 90s and early, no, late, late 80s and early 90s. And uh, so we were granted asylum in Canada, and uh, we had a transit visa through the state. And since my family ran out of money, we got trapped here, and we were not able to move to anywhere. Well, for those seven years that I was in an undocumented alien, I perceived a lot of the stress. My parents went over, not able to work and drive. And uh, well, this is this this. I'm gonna make it real quick. Uh, I think in ninety. Take, take your time. You've been yeah, waiting in, a long time. It's not, it's take leave, your time. Right? So <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going anywhere. We'll be here. All right. So so I, I uh, like in, in I think in ninety six, uh, President Clinton ended up passing a law called Nakara, Nakara and uh, so some of my families got granted uh, residency. So this is what happened. I joined the Navy. I was in the U.S. Navy for three years, and then I entered a special task force, counterterrorism, for another seven years. And I was stationed in Central Europe and the Middle East because I speak Czech, all right? And uh, then my younger brother, he's a U.S. captain in the Navy. He's a surgeon. My older brother, he's a staff sergeant in the U.S. Marines. And these are kids. We were kids who were illegal for seven years. And, and, and I have cousins around my age. Like, uh, I think uh, a lot of the numbers of our opposers do not really uh, understand, and they say numbers do not lie. But uh, I'm not going to go there. A lot, I have a couple cousins who were not able to, to pay the $1,600 for the pardon that they call it for being here illegally. And this is back in the 90s. So as we speak, I have kids. And there are U.S. citizens as well. But then, uh, unfortunately, uh, I really changed my, my speech because there were so many lies told here. If you're an American citizen, if you have kids abroad, your children inherit your citizenship. You don't have to pay a mortgage payment like uh, the gentleman spoke earlier. You can migrate your wife and children very easily. And if you are married to that person of that country, then you have the same benefit to migrate there. So whatever data he, he came and said, it was just simply lie or wrong, or he lost a lot of money for not knowing. And then, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, because I do have a girl in, in, uh, in the Middle East. I, I got involved with a lady over there, and she inherited my, my American citizenship. And she owns an American passport, and she's willing, if she wants to come, then she can come if she chooses to. So. Then we have numbers saying about criminals. As we speak, I work in the Department of Correction. I shouldn't say so, but here. And there is data of who are the violent criminals. And then if, if we have demography and we have broken down every single detail by race, ethnicity, and I don't know if she left, numbers don't lie. The Hispanic and immigrant population is the least incarcerated and, and as she put it on, on, on black and white, uh, the, our white Caucasian are the most violent and the larger number incarcerated in the state of Rhode Island, not immigrants. So those are those numbers, but uh, let me go back to my story because I want to, numbers don't lie, right? That's what it is. So this is what it is. Well, my, my youngest sibling, he's a captain in the U.S. Navy. He has served for around 10 years. I, was, I, I invited him, but he got deployed uh, three months ago to Japan. Same with my older sibling, who's a staff sergeant in the Marines. Now he's in Okinawa. I was going to bring my chief petty officer, second class, what I, pro I really proudly wear. But I said, what for? I'm not in the armed forces anymore, right? So, um, so here, I'm here to say, give the opportunity to these people. We have different languages and background, but we all love our country as at all. Many of us have come here because of the war we have experienced in our countries, and this is not so far 
so far ago. I was a child when Nicaragua was wrapped by war, and it was our beloved uh, Reagan administration who did this. Iran contrast, we all know this. You guys are a lot older than 20, so you remember the 80s, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, and all of these countries were forced to migrate because we, as American, now that I am and I served, it, we have put a stress in these countries because we did not like the government that they were have chosen back then. So we do have the responsibility on providing safety for our children now that are here. The children, like this lady said, I don't know why this woman who's 25 is having kids when she knows she's undocumented and she cannot drive. Doesn't really make any sense. But I think it's our responsibility to safeguard the safety of our children, the future of our state. And we have to bring these people out of shadow. She talked about number that Rhode Island is under a, thousand, over, a little bit over a million. And in 2020, we're losing a seat in the House of Representatives and the federal level because we do not are acting to bring these people out of the shadow and represent our true population here and demography. So thank you very much. Uh, so here I'm supporting the bill H7610. I think it will grant a great opportunity and enrich our state and as a community. And, uh, and let's see them as humans and not illegal aliens, you know, but uh, a fellow human being. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Gaspar, and thank you for, thank you for your service. Thank you.